Good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Chris and I will uh, show you uh, the critical role of money management in trading. I will start with the uh, introduction, and then uh, Chris will continue. So uh, today's webinar will explain different stages of uh, trader development, and then uh, I will actually stress out what is the most important phase in each hour uh, in in uh, in each uh, uh, stage of development, uh, the problem is that many traders simply uh, cannot understand that uh, the system by itself is only good to provide a potential signal, not to uh, f uh, blindly follow it. Else, everyone would be billionaires, guys. Uh, so far, I haven't encountered any expert advisor that uh, can be built based on any strategy that uh, that is successful and that can be successful for many years. The problem with expert advisors, they can work from time to time, but then suddenly they can wipe your account. The thing is that uh, some expert advisors are fine to give you some additional, additional uh, potential to use your charts let's say there are expert advisors which can give you the excellent prediction in maybe some reversals but it's up to you as a trader to actually identify if the signal from an expert advisor or from an indicator is correct and based on the signal you a trader should actually confirm your entry uh, bl trading blindly your own system uh, well unfortunately I need to say it will not give you any good for example the system uh, that gives you 60 70 percent of profitable trades can be good if the market is listening to its standard behavior so if market is going with a trend if there are no whipsaws if there are no major news your system will work but if you start to negate major news, if you don't follow it, then your system might fail. For example, today we had a good Euro-Dollar trade before Draghi spoke, and our sell from yesterday live session from 1.0570, it, it went like 25, 30 pips in profit before Mr. Draghi started to speak. That is why I always say, there is no system that can save safeguard you from big events or pro, or, for, uh, or with uh, big news. The problem is, uh, well, uh, I personally took 20 profits with Euro Dollar, and uh, I didn't want to risk anything before Draghi. Uh, so definitely, guys, that is why I'm saying uh, the thing is that. You might, we all might trade the same way, but if you and the same system. But if you start to negate some crucial factors, such as major news announcement, uh, central bank, uh, central bank uh, rates, rate decisions, or whenever a chief of central bank speaks, then your system will not will not uh, help you. So, guys, always. And this is my really advice for you. Uh, for it doesn't matter if you if you're a new trader or experienced trader, always always follow the calendar. Uh, sometimes following one calendar was not enough. That is why I prefer to follow two calendars: forex factory and Admiral Markets. And I also like to read something. Let's say forex live. It it. It has a good coverage of all major events, and I have seen that uh, today's event, uh, today's Draghi spe speech, was not covered on Forex Factory. So I guess that uh, a lot of traders simply couldn't foresee that uh, the price might go up and down. Okay, so always, guys, always follow the calendar, especially if you're trading intraday. Because you need to know what are major news, what can be expected, else you might be wondering why your trade was actually why your trade hit the stop. So you know, intraday trading is a bit specific, 
and you always need to think about protecting your profits. Before we begin, core standard risk disclaimer explain that CFDs and Forex trading are leveraged products, can't result in losses that exceed your deposits, and this presentation and the video is for information educational purposes only. This video is not part of the .co.uk website, but the globalus.com website. Okay, so today's agenda, we will, uh, well, we will talk about beginner trading, rookie, developing trader, part-time trader, consistent trader, and I will just men mention expert or mentor. There is no point in in explaining how mentors, how experts do their own their their own money management. It's definitely it's definitely for me for me. I mean how I I, I work and how I I see uh, trading like big banks do is the way to go, unless you have a very low account and you need to. Uh, of course, uh, you need to raise your risk. If you have a high account or higher account, then definitely, guys, you, you can trade with, with lower risk and it, it will still be a substantial amount of money if you're successful. But if you have a low account, then, of course, guys, if, you, if you're, uh, let's say, I will cover this in the webinar, if you're a part-time trader uh, wanting to be a consistent trader, then you will from time to time, give yourself a freedom to risk more because you actually know what you're doing, okay? So, yeah, Naivin is saying that he couldn't take profits because he was asleep. Okay, that is why I'm saying, guys, sometimes if you go to sleep and you let your trade running while you sleep, then you can use some expert advisor that can manage the profits, okay? Also, you can check Admiral Market Supreme Edition feature. I think there there is an option uh, to actually uh, you or or just use a trailing stop, guys. Okay, let's say that if you are in profit for 10, 15, 20 pips, 30 pips, use trailing stop after let's say 20 pips of profit. At least you won't lose. You you will be stopped maybe at break even, or you will earn some small profit. But you know, it's very hard to manage the trade. Uh, I mean, it's impossible to manage a trade if you if you sleep. I know uh, we we all come from different parts of the world. Uh, the worst position for traders, I think, is if they are trading from Australia or New Zealand. Then for them, it's very hard to go with well, well with European session, right? And New York, especially New York session, they can use some of the movement in European session, but for the U.S. session is different. Okay, so let's start with the, the first uh, type of trader, uh, rookie trader. Rookie trader usually thinks that he can trade, make millions, while just sitting close to their computer. Beginner trader is very optimistic. He, he is or she is full of excitement there and uh, overconfident. But after a few initial successes, well, usually... The rookie trader thinks that he can make money every single day. That is the biggest, the biggest uh, mistake for beginner traders because uh, some traders are easily lured in forex trading, and they think that uh, this is an easy job that they can make money just by sitting and placing random trades or following some simple system that they have found on the internet without any cues where the price goes, why the price goes, what is what is the pair, what is the meaning behind Japanese yen, what is the meaning behind dollar. So they simply don't understand this. And they will slowly start to learn about revenge trading. They will definitely start to revenge their trades. And of course, you know, beginner's luck, usually they will have some some small streak of luck uh, during their revenge trading and they will probably make up for the loss or novice traders can let's say they can even end up in profits after uh, several days or even a month but it won't last for long because uh, they will probably burn the account uh, then they will start searching for books and signals from other traders because beginner traders uh, they always want some sort of signals, and usually they they ask uh, expert traders, uh, professional traders about signals. Uh, but it's it's not a grateful job because if you want to be a signal provider, then you need to manage trades. 
you know, I, I, I worked actually uh, for one part of my life. I was giving signals and I don't like that because when you do that, you will not teach anything that counterpart and it's very tricky because if you if your trade is not managed well, guys, then you, you also will be in problem because the other part, the other side will actually, uh, they, will, they will say that uh, it's your fault if you, if you gave a wrong signal and so on. So the main problem is novice traders do not understand the basic principle of money management. Okay? The basic principle, guys, of money management. And that is the biggest mistake. For example, Chris and I are professional traders and if we make a deposit of 500 euros in account, our goal is to double or triple the account in a short time. That is not advised for new traders and new traders cannot do that unless they have a streak of luck. Okay, so why should I do that? For example, guys, why not? I can risk 500 euros and I can use high risk with that 500 euros. I really don't mind. But the problem is if a, a novice trader follows what a, we have been doing, they might think that they can do the same and put the same risk for every single of their trades. But then when they lose, they will say, okay, 500 maybe is much to me, so I will not do, do it next time. It's your fault. You haven't told us that you would actually risk that much. Because, guys, if you want to make 500 euros from, uh, if you want to make, uh, let's say, 1,000 euros from 500 euros, you need to risk a little bit, you know, you need to raise your risk. You cannot do it with 1% of risk. I mean, you can, but it will take a whole lot of time. So it's, it's pr practically, you know, it's, it's, it's not the option that I like. We use low risk only on higher accounts. On, on, on some simple accounts you can practice, but you cannot think that you will try to triple or double account every single time. So what is what happens with novice trader? He simply has no idea of stop loss. He is very confused when a signal does not going is not going anywhere and the price starts to whipsaw. And definitely ignoring or trading the news blindly. They, I, I mean guys, and Naveen is saying, uh, you are describing perfectly how I was when I started. Yes, Naveen, because I was exactly the same. I remember a trade, it was back in 2008, 2007 I think. Yes, 2007, wow, 10 years ago. Oh, it was really, I remember a trade when I blindly shorted into ADP simply because the price was moving where I expected to move. So I expected to move based on my knowledge from 10 years ago and of course I won the trade but in, in two or three months I burned my account and then I actually I decided to trade on demo for a full year until I master, uh, or I, I cannot say I master, but at least until I actually am fully, fully involved into price action. And that is when I started to post, just a little bit later, I started to post on Forex Factory, on Euro Dollar Thread, on, you know, on other threads also. Ex actually, I was giving signals back then on Forex Factory because I, I understood the principles of price section and of uh, money management. But the problem is uh, novice traders will definitely lose money every single day and they will burn the initial deposit and they will sweat every time the trade is taken. They are afraid to pull the trigger even if, they, if their system is, is telling them to do so. They are very afraid to do that. The capital risk is at its peak for beginner traders. So guys, the only good thing what can come out of all this is screening time. So it means guys that if you have, a, that by doing this you will have enough screening time 
to get you to next stage. We will talk about the stage. My advice for beginner traders is, again, guys, everything is about money management. So that is why it's a critical role of money management in trading. How much capital to place on each trade? Beginner traders first need to identify how much capital to place on each trade. Now, guys, okay, let me let me be clear. I, uh, this webinar, of course, is is being recorded. It will be on YouTube, and I know that a lot of people will watch this on YouTube. Probably, there will be a lot of new traders. So, new traders, listen to me. First thing, before you actually try any system. You need to decide how much capital to place on each trade. You need to accept the loss, okay? You need to accept the loss. The, the losses are the part of winning, okay? Losses are the part of every single job. So you need to accept that from time to time or even it might happen in a streak that you will have losses. But then, guys, if you experience a losing streak, if you are, will you still trade the same way? This is crucial decision. You need to approach this question and change something in your trading, else you won't be able to proceed to stage number two. Start with higher time frame trading. Invest less capital and try to make 2 to 3% consistently in next few months. If you're able to do all of this, then you're ready for the next stage, developing trader. Developing trader starts to read books and is a bit careful about the trades. He or she will still lose money, but now those losses are smart because the trader, a trader is not a rookie. Now he start, he already skipped from the stage one to this stage two, and he starts to use stop loss, but still is accept, is accept, is um, okay. He still will be over trading, susceptible to over trading. He will realize that demo trading is necessity, and the good thing is that his screening time is still on a high constant because he has been well, pretty much interested in trading. You know, guys, when you make your first money, then you see the potential of Forex trading. And because you already have had a streak of two or three profitable months, you are very, very interested to invest more. And a good thing that comes out of this is that screening time is high. So you will still, still learn from your own mistakes. And developing trader will start to visualize every trade before it's taken. He will develop a hunt for self-understanding. He will still burn many accounts, but eventually, guys, he will start with a live account. And that is a good thing, live account. Don't forget, guys. If you are demo trading, it's, it's a good thing, but only, only, guys, if you are ready to accept the fact that you will be actually trading your demo account as if it were for a live account. That is the only possible way. So, guys, forget about placing 50,000 or 100,000 euros or dollars on demo account and thinking that you will do the same on live account unless you really want to deposit 50, 100 euros or dollars initially on a live account. So my advice for developing traders is you, 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 will, you will know when you, when, you, when you skip the first stage and you will remember my words you will know that you have already become a developing trader. So, if you still use demo account and you want to invest 10,000 euros, then, guys, 
start with demo account of 10,000 euros. Or if you want to invest 20,000 pounds, start with 20,000 pounds. And treat your demo account as if it were for a live account. I did it for a full year and I still have my statement of demo account. I'm, I have uh, saved it to my hard disk. It's, 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 it's definitely to remind me how I started. Because there is no other way, guys. You need to be fully aware that market is, it, it's a risky job. So you need to be aware of the risk. And developing trader will realize that Holy Grail lies in himself. But he still does not know what Holy Grail is. Developing trader thinks that Holy Grail is having a good system. And now if I start to ask, 90% of traders out there will tell me that Holy Grail is, is actually a good system. And, you know, it, it, it can be found. And developing trader is in learning phase. He will jump from a system to a system searching for a holy grail. But he will start to realize that it's not in the system. It's something different. He doesn't know what the difference is, but he knows that it's something that it has to do with himself. Now, if he is pretty much, let's say, consistent, he will either quit or proceed further. If he decides to quit, the chance is that in this stage, guys, okay, in this stage, the trader will never get back to trading. Because this is the stage which will define the future of the trader. I have come to a realization that traders who are in this stage usually will proceed to stage number three, but only, guys, if they actually are successful if they have some success in forex trading because psychology is have is still having a high effect on the trader on a trader and this is crucial now psychology and realization that holy gray is in himself that will lead us to okay first yeah it will lead us to part time trader but first, what should developing, trader, developing traders do? They should definitely use the margin correctly, and they need to understand what margin is. They need to understand the use of the leverage correctly, and they need to definitely decide that they will not revenge their trades. Else, if this happens, we are back here. And there will, no be, there, there will be no interest for a further development. This is the time to develop good habits, guys. Because if you develop good habits, then, guys, your good habits will follow you into the next stage. Okay? So, guys, in this stage, if you are a developing trader, this is the time to develop good habits. Okay? And stick to higher time frames. Still use 4 hour and daily because, because you want to actually go to the next stage, part-time trading. Part-time trading is a good thing because part-time trading will also define you as potentially professional trading. You, what, what means professional trading? Professional trader trading mean, means that you're, you don't need to do only trader for a living, trading for a living. So professional traders trade, but also do some, let's say, other things. So they will stick to higher time frame trade. Let's say they can use also one hour time frame because it's intraday and they are trading part time. They will not go lower to 15, 5 minute, 1 minute time frame, but still they might be successful. And if they are successful enough, it will develop them. It will actually turn them into professional traders. So part-time traders 
learn to specialize in one or few particular pairs. It's, it's okay, but in this stage, it's probably enough for them to make consistent profits. <clears throat> or if they lose from time to time, of course, it's normal, the losses won't be that big. Losses are cut short. Scaling out is also used because part-time traders know the power of scaling out, the power of part-time profit-taking, and that actually happened today. I am a professional trader and I exited my Euro-Dollar position prior to Draghi's speech. I, I, won't, I, I wouldn't gamble, guys, because Draghi and his his small conference could have also been bearish to euro dollar but I mean why to gamble when you know that there is still another day for you to trade right so part-time traders will trade mostly on higher time frames due to a day job that day job can be actually something that is or not connected to forex market maybe they are simply interest to make additional income and they want to do part-time trading. They will start to accept losses as a natural part of the job but they're still disappointed with losses. Okay, Then they start to gain money more consistently but cannot use strategies due to day job obligations. Still searching for strategies that would give them chance to quit the day job. This is crucial in this part guys. Because uh, part-time traders are looking for quitting their day job. Okay? They want to be totally financially independent of their jobs and they want to quit their day jobs. But good thing here is that risk is calculated before profits because they know the power of money management and they have come to realization that risk is more important than profits. Profits will come, but risk is more important. And because of that, correct lot size is used. Revenge trades are still possible, but not exaggerated. And they are very determined to become consistent. You're using small risks and less profits. This can be also the trap. I will mention it. Okay? So for part-time traders, okay, they don't lower the risk too much. They should not lower the risk too much, else the performance might drop. Part-time traders might come to realization that they're not making enough profits. And why is that? Because they always use very low risk. This, this, this is the problem. Okay? Because if, if this problem is not solved, then there is no final stage. Okay? There is no final stage. Consistent trader. So, this can be a problem, okay? The performance of the account might drop, okay, if they start to lower the risk too much. So, what I suggest is every part-time trader needs to find their own comfort zone for the risk. They should definitely subdue their emotions if they're not making enough money because they are part-time trading. It doesn't mean that they cannot be successful traders. Okay, I always say risk is fixed, stop loss is dynamic. So 20% on a million account is not the same as 20% on $100 account. That can be the problem for part-time traders. Okay, guys, this. But good thing is that because of all this, they will try to search for the pairs that give them more profits. Why trade Euro-Dollar only if you can trade pound, yen, or dollar, yen, that have three times the range of, let's say, or two times the range of euro, dollar. And they are still almost major currencies. It's a minor cross, but pound, yen is, it, it, it's brilliant, guys. And part-time traders will switch to multiple pairs. Then they should use statistics in different account management systems like Statements, Supreme Edition, or My Fixed Book to improve their trading and get to the final stage, consistency, okay, consistent trader. Now, 
Consistent traders learn to properly manage the risk. They will always use the risk, whatever they want to do. So if they have high accounts, probably low risk. If they want to build up small account, then they can afford to use high risk. And they should be profitable at least by six months in a row. Why I say six months, not six years? Because, guys, I personally know traders who were very, very profitable until DC, not DCB, the, the SMB dropped the floor, taking Swiss out to, to well, you, you remember, I don't need to, men, to mention what happened when SMB decided to cut the floor and to, to actually cut their currency off from Euro. Every successful trader probably experienced the worst day in their lives. They, it doesn't mean that they're not good traders. But guys, it means that market is very unpredictable from time to time and that you need really to be wary of every single possibility. So that is why I'm saying if you can make it with six months in a row, really, to be in profit, guys, that means that you are consistent. And you definitely don't need to change anything in, in your strategy. Okay? So a consistent trader will use a proven strategy and he stops searching for other different strategies. But the problem is this euphoria, guys. I will get to that to this. Consistent trader is not afraid to lose. It's it's okay, but he's still for sometimes euphoric. So when when does consistent trader start to lose? Usually when higher risk is taken. So let's say that we have, let's say just for example, that we have made from 10k that consistent trader managed to make 20k by using similar risk. And then just because emotions get involved and euphoria gets involved, he decided to risk five lot in a single trade. Okay? Well, you know, it's still psychology. So it can wipe out a complete profit with 20 pip of a stop loss or, or if he starts to revenge his trades. So that consistency will definitely be on the other side because of trader psychology. If you are consistent by six months in a row, try to follow one simple thing, and that is don't change anything in your trading. Don't search for other strategies. Don't look for uh, different indicators. Follow these guys. Write it down if you cannot remember. What was your strategy? How many pips you, you usually earn by using the, that strategy? What kind of money management you've been doing to achieve six months consistency? Don't change anything. You will learn to be patient. You will take few trades per day unless you have a small account and then you can play with it, right? I, I encourage that. It's okay, guys. Invest 500 euros and you can play with it. Why not? If you can afford, of course, to lose it. Use few different strategies depending on market conditions. So this is consistency. If I know that market is very volatile, I will use my volatility method. If I see that market is trending, then let's say only POC zones. It's the same approach, but just we can mix few things here and there, depending on the market. It's the same strategy, but mixes few things. Consistent trader can trade for a living, providing that he or she has a big account. So trading $10,000 or euros in Thailand is not the same as trading 10,000 euros in Germany. With trading 10,000 euros, you can probably live as a consistent trader in Thailand, Vietnam, right? But you can live beneath an underpass in US. It's not enough for developed countries. So why am, why am I saying this? Because I've been approached by many traders asking me, can I live with trading 10,000 euros? 
if you want to live beneath an underpass in UK, USA, then try to trade 10,000. If you want to live much better with trading 10,000, then go to Vietnam or Thailand or I don't know, some other country, and you can make some money to actually sustain your living. In Europe, it's not possible. Okay? Fully, be fully aware of strength and weaknesses because still as a consistent trader you will be prone to your own psychology okay to your own weaknesses think about your weaknesses identify and never use them never try never let them get to the surface again because if you are controlled by your emotions, you will get to this stage and everything will fall apart. This is my part, guys. I hope that you enjoy. Chris will continue now and as always, follow our webinars. I will see you very soon, next week on webinars. Tomorrow, NFP will provide pre-NFP analysis and I hope, guys, that you will listen to me, okay, and that you will heed our advice. Thanks, guys. Chris, you may continue. Thank you so much, Nenad. Great stuff there uh, about the stages of traders. Let me uh, hand over here and show my screen first of all. Let's see. There we go. So you should be able to see this slide that shows, uh, you know, two columns basically. Now, uh, I didn't catch the, the first uh, 10 minutes or 15 minutes or so. I'm not exactly sure uh, of this part. So if I repeat anything double, I do apologize. Uh, but uh, this is what I have prepared for today. Uh, basically, you know, when you're starting out with trading or whatever moment that you're trading, you have a certain capital in mind or you have a capital in total and you have a capital in mind that you want to dedicate to trading. So make sure that there is a difference. You don't want to trade with all the capital. Uh, that's too risky. So. Uh, choose a percentage that you feel comfortable with, as Nana was saying, that you want to dedicate to your trading. Then you want to dedicate a part of that trading capital to, to the broker of your choice, or perhaps uh, to the brokers of your choice. And then you want to have in mind, of course, that you what kind of leverage you use, what kind of margin, that you don't run into any problems of that sort. Regarding risk, it's actually looking at how much risk per month, how much risk per day or week, or how much risk per trade you take. So. Uh, that's something you want to keep in mind when we go along. Uh, talking about money management, we often uh, talk about reward to risk, etc., and whether we should use pips or risk percentage. So let's start off with that. Basically, you can use a fixed loss size or you can use a fixed risk percentage. Both do have their merits, do have their advantages. Uh, the fixed loss size is quicker because you just have an automatic approach, you take always three minis or whatever uh, you know the amount is that you have. So it's always using uh, a same lot size. It is quicker, which is a benefit if you're scalping because the market is moving fast. So you want to enter perhaps faster, obviously. So you need to spend less time about calculating what uh, the lot size is, uh, and that you can do if you have a fixed lot size. That also is a bit easier if you and better if you have relatively the same size uh, stop loss. Or you can use a quick way, a quick mental way of calculating it, right? You can say typically, for instance, if I'm 30 pips uh, stop loss, right, I take one mini. So if it's, or you can say for 50 pips stop loss, I have two minis. So if it's twice as small, you can take twice as many lot sizes. If it's twice as big, you take half the lot size. Those are quick kind of mental tricks to for you to calculate the lot size quicker. The other way is fixed risk percentage. It's more accurate and it's better with drawdown uh, because your losses will not vary as much. Uh, of course, with lot sizes, fixed lot size, fixed lot sizes, your losses could vary a bit more. You could have once one half percent loss, or the other time maybe three percent. So those losses are creating more volatility, uh, which makes it riskier. Uh, in theory, so you're looking at, yeah, if you look at the statistics, risk management statistics, where I'm not going to dive into right now, it's a different webinar, it, it is a bit more riskier, 
with a fixed risk percentage, let's say that I'm not risking more than a percent. The bottom line is typically 1%. That's the max you can lose. So that's the bottom side. And therefore, if you have less volatility there, it's, it's less risky. It's also, in a way, better because when you go on streaks, basically, if you go on a streak, the risk percentage goes up because, I mean, the, the risk percentage doesn't go up, but I mean, if your capital goes up, the, that 1% is more money. So if you start with 2K, for instance, and you have grown in the meantime to 3K, right? Then 1% of 2K is 20, 20 bucks or 20 euros. 1% of 3K is 30 euros, right? So the quantity does go up, although the risk stays the same because your capital is going up. So that's the green line here. That's the green line here, as you can see, like this. Whereas a fixed amount, if you keep that one mini or, or five minis or what at one standard, your account will, will not, unless you change that fixed lot size, which you can do, it will go more flat like this. So with streaks to the upside, you will not get the same benefit with fixed percentage. The opposite is true with actually the downside. When you use a fixed risk percentage, you will not have a strong as strong as a drawdown as if you use the fixed amount. Of course, that's assuming that you keep the same lot size and don't adjust the lot size, which you always could do, of course. Uh, but if you don't adjust that lot size, then the percentage kind of uh, breaks the drawdown, but in a way accelerates the winning streak. So it's good for winning streak, bad, uh, it's good for winning streak, good for the losing streak as well. If you if you just keep it as is, right? Now there's more on that actually in just a second. Uh, whether you know taking risk percentage or lot size is good, I'll dive into that a bit later. Generally speaking, though, uh, focusing on reward to risk is very useful. I mean, if you made five pips, it might seem like a, a temporary victory, but five pips, so many beginning traders are happy with a few pips, three pips, two pips, 1.5 pips, <laughs> 3.8 pips, uh, but if they're risking, I don't know, right, uh, 50, uh, 100 pips, just, just go to, I guess, any of these forums and, and you not, I don't know, I haven't gone in a long while, but I guess that you'll see uh, many of those stories, right? And is it good? Well, the reward to risk that uh, is less than one to one is going to have typically on average a tough time. Uh, it's going to be difficult to compensate all those uh, small wins uh, will not lead to a consistent push forward because one loss will wipe away a lot of those wins. So that's typically the, the problem. A lot of small wins, big losses, and a big mental blow as well. So trading capital and mental capital, very difficult. Whereas if you look at the reward to risk ratio and you understand what, you know, what you're aiming for, you understand why it's, when it's beneficial to look for a decent ratio, um, you're going to look at it differently. So instead of aiming for two pips and, and losing 40 when, when it goes wrong, you understand that that's not something that you can keep up. Uh, and the win percentage is so high that it's very, very difficult to uh, maintain that. So what is better, winning 40 pips or winning 30 pips? And the answer is, it depends. What is the risk that I'm taking? What is the stop loss size for each trade? And if the stop loss size is 30 pips with a 40 pip win, but 15 pips with a 30 pip win, then the answer is, the better win is a 30 pip win. Because the reward to risk ratio is 2 and the other one is 1.3. And the higher the reward to risk ratio, the lower the win percentage needs to be. Of course, the higher the risk reward to ratio, reward to risk ratio, excuse me, uh, the more difficult it is to get that win as well. So it's something we need to keep an eye. Aiming for 20 to 1 might seem attractive, but it's not easy to obtain, right? Uh, although we only would need 6% wins, as the image shows, it's psychologically difficult because you might indeed literally win only one out of ten. And that's something that's difficult too because then the drawdown is quite long 
and sturdy, psychologically very difficult. So you want to find a reward to risk that suits, uh, you know, that builds an equity curve that potentially leads to an equity curve that suits and matches our uh, psychology as well. So it's not necessarily, the, you know, the higher the better necessarily. It depends on what is good for us. But there is an optimum zone and it is an 0.1 to 1 and it's probably not 500 to 1 reward to risk, right? Uh, but for you, it, it might be, who knows, you have to figure it out, but it could be 1 to 1, it could be 2 to 1, it could be 3 to 1, that depends from trader to trader. Oh, there's a small typo I see here. Uh, obviously, it should be other around with 3 to 1 to 4 to 1. Sorry for that. All right. So, how to calculate that lot size? Uh, if you have $2,000 and you're taking a half a percent risk, then you can spend $10 per trade. That's what you can lose, $10. What you can win depends what you're aiming for, what the market is showing you, but that's the risk that you're taking. If the stop loss, if you look at the market and you look at the market structure and the technical stop loss, which I think, we think, Nenita I think is the best, uh, and that happens to be 50 pips in this case, maybe because you're looking at the hourly chart, for instance, or four hour chart, maybe a bit higher time frame, 50 pips, it's not a big deal. Just the fact that it's 50 pips doesn't mean it's bad, right? Many traders get a bit weary or scared of a higher, uh, of a stop loss with a higher amount of pips, but that's not necessarily bad. It depends on how you trade. Uh, and if you feel comfortable with that, other traders don't feel comfortable with that, and rather go with 25 or 20 pips. That's fine too, right? So it's just an example. It doesn't have to be 50 pips. It all depends on how you want to trade, what time frames you're looking at, what you feel comfortable with. But in generally speaking, there is not something. There's nothing wrong with the 50 pip stop loss if you feel comfortable with it, right? That's the point. Uh, let's assume this 50 pip. So with 10 dollars to lose you can calculate that one micro you lose five dollars if the trade goes against you so you can trade two micros basically two micros on that trade maybe nothing exciting for you potentially but the advantage is that you can stick to the trade now you got to find the balance then it said don't risk too much don't risk too little as well so if that's true then maybe half a percent is too little maybe then you should go with one percent or maybe even 2%. That depends on what you feel comfortable. Finding an optimal, optimum uh, point where you feel comfortable, confident, but not careless as well. So that risk percentage in general, or the lot size that you choose, right, depending on what style you choose, has a lot to do with how much capital you have and the goals that you want, that you want to achieve. So if you're looking to uh, make a, you know, break even at the beginning because you're just starting out, for instance, um, and you have a relatively smaller capital because you want to test it first, then it could make sense to go with the with the risk percentage that's on the smaller side, something that you don't feel reckless or careless with, that you do care, of course, uh, about the trade and about the outcome, but you, you feel calm. I think calmness is, is, in that case, very important. So you could choose to go even with a very low percentage. You might even go for, if you have a capital of two, a few thousand, you could go low. You can go with, uh, and you don't have crazy wide stop losses, maybe like a thousand pips, right? <laughs> then you could go with a half a percent or 0.25%, right? But if you are more ambitious, maybe because you've been already trading for a few years and your goal is to get uh, to reach 10% uh, by the end of the year and try to aim for a couple of percent in a month, for instance, and you have 10,000, for instance, right? Uh, you want to be a bit more conservative, or but if otherwise you might have a situation where you have a small account and you want to be more aggressive because you want to build up that account. So if you're building up that account, you you might want to go more towards a fixed lot size would be more risky, you might burn the account, but you do it on purpose because you want to build up an account from, I don't know, a few hundred dollars to thousand or to two thousand. And Nenet has done that a couple of times uh, and he's written a blog about that. And the risk is a tad more at the beginning. He did it on purpose knowing that, okay, if that account is lost, it's lost, 
you can handle that, you can accept that, but if you don't want to lose it and if you're not ready to, to lose it, then that might not be the right way and you still want to maybe stick to, to a risk percentage, right? But it's true that if you want to build up an account, it is something to consider. Going for fixed lot size and accepting a higher risk. So it depends. Are you looking for experience? Are you looking to build up an account? Are you looking for an income account? Side income, main income. If you're all looking for a main income, uh, you want to be very critical of that step. You want to be aware of what income you need, what costs you have, are there any other spots you can get income from besides trading? Because that's a heavy responsibility and it's difficult uh, to maintain consistency with that pressure. All right? So these are all things you want to consider. And if you do adjust your risk, you can do it in, in blocks. Let's say um, you, know, you have a capital of 10000 for instance, and you you're taking 1% of that 1,000, 10,000, right? But you've reached 12,000 in the meantime. So you could wait till you reach 12,000 before you say, okay, I'll use that new, new capital amount for my calculations. Or you can do it dynamic and you can continuously and constantly use the new balance for calculating your, your lot size. So if you're on 10,450, you'll use that 1% of that. Or you can just stick to 10,000 uh, and, and wait for a certain target. Both are possible. It depends how, how precise you want to be, really. Um, you know, if you, if you really want to use the consist consistently the newest level, you can do that. Um, to the downside, you could say, I'll just, for instance, as soon as I drop below 10,000, then I start using 9,500 as my capital. Or you can just use the exact new level. If you have a lot of trades open, for instance, if you are scalping and, and you like to have a couple of trades open at the same time, uh, then maybe using blocks is useful uh, because the running total could be, you know, could be unclear because you have trades open. So it could be useful maybe to, to use that. Compounding, um, it depends what your goals are. Do you want to keep the capital there or do you want to slowly withdraw some of those profits? Uh, that's a choice that depends on your goals as well as your comfort level um, of, of trading. Uh, you know, the more capital you have, the, your dynamic, your psychology might change. If you're used to trading with 10,000, you might feel less comfortable with trading 20,000. If you're used to trading with 1,000, how do you feel with trading 5,000? So letting the capital grow is, is useful if you can do that, sure. But to, you know, be aware of your comfort zone, be aware of your goals, and try to find a balance about whether you withdraw or, or leave it for, uh, for more growth. Uh, regarding stop losses, take profits, you know, often, Money management is quite a wide theme, wide, a th wide topic. If you start looking for money management, you'll find quite a lot of long list of things that could be discussed. This is one of those often, so I wanted to mention it. Um, you know, stop losses can vary in a lot of ways. Technically, stop loss, the chart stop loss, is something that uh, Nenneth and I always use. But you can have other ones, time stop losses, that you know the time is the trade is too long on. That's something I use too. Volatility, margin equity, um, but it is important to be aware of the risk that you're taking, and to to have a stop loss so you can calculate the reward to risk. If you don't have a stop loss, all of this talk that I've done now and then that I've done now is is not needed because you can't measure anything. It is highly uncertain, and you could you're risking your entire capital and more in fact and you can't make any of these calculations so that's that's called you know that's called gambling and is uncertain it creates uncertainty so that's why it's so important the exit side when you look at the opposite take profit right for exiting for profit that can be done in various ways 
you could, uh, of course, go for a reward to risk ratio, or you can look for a certain reward to risk ratio, but also include the market structure. What is the chart saying to us? I like that. I mean, you could obviously aim for one to one, but maybe that take profit is just above or below support. So I like to consider both. I uh, definitely want to take a look at what the chart is saying uh, to me before making that decision. And then I'll see what, after I look at the market, then I'll take a look what kind of reward to risk ratio it is. So reward to risk ratio is a great thing to keep an eye on, but it's not the first thing. I first want to look at the market structure, then I'd like to take a look at the reward to risk ratio. If that's good, I might take the trade. If it isn't, I might skip the trade. If it's good, then I might look at the various ways of exiting entirely at the one spot, splitting the take profits at two various spots, using trills uh, and trade management options to reduce the risk, to lock in profit. But certainly, above all, I look at market structure and not at the number of pips, personally. I know that certain, in a certain way, I do look at the number of pips. When I look at the Fibonacci sequence, I actually count pips. But for target-wise, I don't use a fixed target of, let's say, 25 pips always. No, that's not what I do. I mean, it might work for some. That's great. I don't use it. I first look at the market structure. I do use pip size, pip numbers, pip counts in terms of how far the market might move. That's true, but it's not an automatic. It's part of my calculations. I take into account that on an hourly chart, 89 pips is a decent movement. Uh, and on a, on a five minute chart, a massive movement. So obviously, there are certain movements you might expect, reasonably be expect, on certain time frames, and others that are not so likely, right? Certainly, you can keep a feel for that. Very important, what is realistic. But I don't automatically aim for 20 pips. Many traders do that, and it might work, but I like to look at market structure and understand where could be uh, a better exit just because, just looking at what, what the charts are telling me. What kind of information is it giving to me? When you talk about money management, you talk often about letting the winners run and cutting the losses short. That's very important, uh, difficult to do. I use myself uh, Fibonacci sequence levels for letting the winners run. Unfortunately, I don't have time to go into that because that's a separate entire webinar that, or at least half a webinar that would have to be used at minimum 15 minutes, to the bare minimum to explain that. Please take a look at other webinars. Go to the YouTube channel of Admiral Markets for that or sign up to new webinars for that with uh, Admiral Markets. Um, regarding that in the future, cutting losses short, I use time, frac time factor fractals that explain more about when the trade is not going my way or the trade management webinars in the past. Also, please go to trade to the YouTube channel for Admiral Markets. What I do is typically on quickly, I let give some time and space for the trade and I become more demanding. Once it's at break even or the, re the risk has been reduced, I give it more space. And then when it's closer to target, I give it more, less time and less space again. So it's a yo-yo effect. I explain more in webinars on that. Scaling in and scaling out advanced uh, ways of tackling trade management. Scaling in is possible maybe on a, like a scout, a small trade to test the waters and then take a trade when you have more confirmation. That is one way of doing it. Uh, but be aware that the total risk is not more than you usually risk. That is within the trade parameters, uh, risk management parameters, excuse me. Scaling out is something I do more often. Uh, I like to, to play around with exits. Uh, I don't do that as much with entries or I don't know the last time I had a scale in uh, I don't know I, I rarely do it personally it's not something necessarily wrong just keep an eye on the risk management and uh, last but not least uh, any you know let's say unconventional methods of handling money management, like for instance, doubling the lot size with an after losing trade, or I don't know, uh, even having the, the lot size. It, it, it doesn't lead to consistency. 
Uh, I don't think it's a good way. It is something that I would definitely advise to avoid. And it just has to do with a lot of volatility, and it's, it's not good for the stats. You want to choose a risk level. You can even give some space to that. You might you know, give certain leeway. I say, OK, some trades, I take 1% uh, of the trades. I might take 1.5%. That's OK. Some kind of band is fine, as long as you feel comfortable with that band. But you don't want to make a rule of saying, OK, I automatically ha double the risk. That is Martingale stuff. I don't know much about it uh, in the sense that I uh, do not do it myself and I don't advocate it, I don't write about it because I, I just think it's, 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 it's a gambling strategy, right? So, but a certain band, let's say 0.5 to 0.7%, you know, that I think is fine. Other things to avoid, uh, investing too much of your own savings for trading. Um, at the beginning, you want to go on the lower end. If you feel more confident, more experienced, you might go a bit more higher end of that range, what you feel comfortable with. Uh, loans, no, no. Uh, be careful with going full-time. Uh, be careful with managing of trades in your account. And be careful of uh, buying expert advisors and stuff like that. Just do your homework. Do your due diligence. That's it. All right. Well, that was my part. Uh, we look forward for new webinars next week. Nenit with his weekly FX recap on Mondays. I'm taking a look at intraday focus in March, uh, both on Tuesday and Wednesday. We're going to take a look at a new time as well in the afternoon. So I'm looking forward to, to that uh, intraday afternoon trading of a different approach. Nenit also a different approach with his live Wednesday's live trading session with Nenit. And uh, next week, we take a look at volatility webinar. Same time, same place. So thanks for, for being here. I uh, hope that you check out as well, besides the education part, analytics platforms and uh, articles. Here you can see the blog, the, the market heat map, a lot of things to discover. So I hope that you do that uh, once this webinar is finished. And uh, that's about it. Thanks so much. And uh, great trading, folks. Cheers.